Hi friends, this is Raj Sahu from Christ Words First Ministries in South California. As you know, I've been uh, loading videos of different uh, videos really to highlight or to underscore what Jesus taught. My first and last intention is to share what Jesus taught. That's why my ministries is called Christ's Words First Ministries and my name is Raj Sahu. Today we'll examine something or rather scrutinize something very, very interesting, what Jesus taught. As you can see, my obsession is with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I really don't give too much, attach too much importance to human, some other teachers who try to change it to suit their doctrine. What did Jesus teach? This is always what I have in mind. And for that reason, I keep sifting, studying, examining and absorbing his words. They're precious, they're fantastic, priceless. And I would highly ex exhort you, encourage you to study his words. Not just read, study. Have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and you will know the truth. And that truth will set us and you free. From what? Ignorance. And what? Deception. Alright, there are many um, videos on that deception. I put that, those on. I would on YouTube, I would highly encourage you to read and study and um, rather watch them and study the scriptures provided. I always quote the scripture, nothing is of my own thinking or my feelings, okay? Now that being said, let's dive straight into this video. The, the subject of this video is mammon, all right? This is not often discussed or even taught in Christian churches. I being a part of that church, uh, that same movement or the same churches, I proudly say I'm a Christian, but I do not completely subscribe to everything they teach in the churches. Some things are tweaked, some things are not even taught. So who's this mammon? Why am I discussing this mammon? Where does he figure? Is he a part of Bible? Yes, he is. Mammon, M-A-M-M-O-N. Now, this is this guy is mentioned by none other than Jesus. Okay? Where does he mention? Let's dive straight into that. In Matthew 6, 24. Matthew 6, 24, Jesus references this guy Mammon first time. And you will come to know he's a little different than just the word money or wealth. Because why does Mammon figure in Matthew 6, 24, Luke 16, 13? And why not elsewhere in the Bible? Why isn't money called or addressed as Mammon? Think about it, guys. Were we told to, or was it diluted, diluted to um, suit doctrines or make, however you, uh, the, the teaching of Jesus was changed into just word wealth from mammon. But Jesus did not say the word wealth. He would, he could have, right? He did not. So let's, and the original scripture was in Greek. All these translations we have have come from Greek and the Greek word says the word mamona m-a-m-m-o-n-a -M 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 all right it does not say money so who's this mamona also pronounced or rather translated as mammon in English for that we will have to examine Matthew 6 24 Jesus says no man can serve two masters no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. All right. So Jesus is specifically referring to this guy or this dark deity called mammon. All right. We will jump into that very quickly, dive into that rather and find out what this mammon is or who this mammon is. But before we go to that, I'll read a second time. See, Jesus was uh, throwing a lot of clues in Bible and we need to grasp them, or rather understand and pick them up so we understand what he's speaking. Rather than jumping into what teachers teach at churches, try to understand what Jesus was teaching us, trying to, he was throwing clues around. Remember, God, uh, God says that my ways are different than your ways and my thoughts are different than your thoughts as the heavens are higher than uh, earth. So my thoughts are higher than yours and my ways are different than yours. 
he operates on a different level but yet he makes it possible for us to understand provided we are provided we are interested in studying scrutinizing examining what the lord taught okay for that you have to do a study on jesus's words and then you will know the truth again i repeat and that truth will set you free from what ignorance and what deception all right that being taken care of because i can't squeeze it all in one uh video you have to watch some of my other videos but for this you do not have to watch them you have to understand only one thing that you need to study god's words through the lord jesus who was the son of god face of god john 10 30 okay so let's go to the other one now coming back to the point jesus is throwing clues you need to pick them up and then put them together and you'll have the picture it's not difficult i was in the same boat as you are i just nodded my head to everything that was taught till i discovered the huge anomalies the huge contradictions the er errors in the bible so to speak and they are there for a reason because we didn't study the lord's words enough we didn't scrutinize them we didn't examine them we didn't investigate we didn't absorb them we didn't assimilate if we had we would have picked up the clues right so right this is exciting guys so now we have matthew 6:24 where we re i repeat again no man can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold the one and despise the other no one can serve both god and mammon you cannot Jesus is telling us very clearly this is Matthew 6:24 choose one god or mammon so i want you to understand what's going on and then i say luke 16:13 luke 16:13 jesus again says the same thing okay in luke 16:13 and when it is being recorded twice in the gospels it merits more attention and remember jesus says which i have put it here on my uh, whiteboard Truly, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than the master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. John thirteen sixteen. Let nobody's words contradict Jesus or exceed it. It cannot. Nobody's words can exceed Jesus Christ's words. Remember, friends, take that to heart. We are Christians. We are not anybody else, right? We need to uh, follow, absorb, and obey the Lord. Now, what does Jesus say? In Luke sixteen thirteen. No servant is able to serve two masters. Okay, Luke sixteen thirteen. No servant is able to serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and will love the other, or he will be devoted to one and he will despise the other. You are not able to serve both God and Mammon. So, friends, this is the second time he's saying the same thing in different words, slightly different, but the same things. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. So this begs the question: Who is this mammon after all? If he were wealth, Jesus would, like I said just a little while ago, that if it were just money or wealth, as the churches underplayed or downplayed rather the word, uh, they started calling mammon money, because they were kind of confused, confounded. Who's this mammon? Where did he come from? Is he different from Satan? Yes, he is. Now this guy, mammon, we will come to know in a flash. Who's this mammon? as i did my more due diligence to find out and i would recommend exhort you to do don't believe me also don't believe anybody trust the lord's words red lettered words and then you can do your due diligence but i'm giving you scoop a, a real good stuff here all biblical all straight from the word nothing of mine okay so who's this mammon mammon is a demon who according to christian theology embodies one of the cardinal sins greed in fact this demon he's a demon guys understand he is not just money he is demonic like geodina in um, capital small uh, so rather small words god of wealth he is demonic god of wealth called mammon in fact and he's a, he is he seems to be this demon has monstrous greed is so powerful that innocent men can be sucked it up sucked up in the amount of the powerful um, greed he the the net of greedy spins around us and and we get sucked into it and corrupted so that we may focus our attention on building up worldly treasures instead of virtues that can carry us into the kingdom of heaven you know now jesus is asking us to make a choice between mammon a demonic 
god of wealth and greed and everything wealth can buy you know that through wealth but basically the main tool and the power of this dark deity is money but he is not money he's the guy who spins the web of greed and money around us and we know how many of us have got caught and trapped into the web this mammon spins getting the message now this is why jesus asked us don't do it that's why he says lay your treasures in heaven not here where you know moths cannot get at it the thieves cannot steal he was telling us invest in my kingdom not in this world if you are in the world but he says again but you are not off the world right he says that can i i'll give you the verse it's in uh, john 15 19 john 15 19 elsewhere if you were of the world the world would uh, love you as its own but because you are not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you now jesus jesus is telling us very clearly we do not belong to this world we are we are like aliens to this world even as he is okay so understand what the christ is saying the, the and again jesus again i would like to mention where it's written that do not treasure uh, put your um, treasures in on earth because fi- on the final day this is going to end up against us guys so understand what's happening Matthew 6 19:20 again Jesus Christ as you can see my favorite is Jesus and he gave us all the information we just did not latch on to that we did not study Christ's words we ran after the deceiver Paul I don't want to mention Paul too much here check my videos on his deception and that is why we are in the soup that we are now because we have ended up serving mammon because by um Paul's teachings he was uh, from the devil mr paul the 13th self proclaimed apostle jesus never appointed but there's a plethora of evidence i provided in my previous um, videos i'll give a link or you can just subscribe to my channel check them jesus warns us in matthew 6 19 20 this is a real warning because it will all add up together friends it's not easy to understand unless we study the red lettered words of the lord Jesus says do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal okay but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal and then he says that that uh, and then he says in John 10 verse 10 the thief comes to only to steal kill and destroy I have come that you may have life and life in abundance but this is not on earth it's talking about his heaven that try to store your or rather treasure put your treasures in heaven don't run after treasures on earth do not serve mammon is his warning all right do you see how it's all adding up because friends more than satan it is this demo- demonic um, god of wealth who's part of satan's team he's a team member these guys this man or this god or this deity this dark lord or this uh, demonic god however you want to express it has taken down more people than even satan because we fell into the trap of wealth so glamorous so tempting it is and yet as jesus wants us do not serve this wealth or demonic god of sat uh, mammon because this will take you down you cannot he just making he giving you a choice choose god or choose this guy what does this mean choose god or choose mammon as i mentioned matthew 6:24 luke 16:13 he says very clearly you cannot serve both make a choice because on the last day this will be taken into consideration who did you choose to serve god or mammon 
because paul started teaching the deception saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone also called sola fide doctrine it's good even if you serve mammon or satan also who cares as long as you believe that's why his brother jesus christ brother john james he was furious at paul and he 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 uh, resorted with this rebuke or this um, caviar you fool don't you know that faith without good works is dead this matthew 2 uh, it's in james 2 24 to rather the specific one is james 2 26 and but i would recommend you to read james 2 to 14 to 26 anyway this is what uh, the deal is that we cannot be saved unless there is uh, faith is backed up by good works and obedience all right that is to highlight just one out of tens of verses which um, strike down um, paul's doctrine of saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone did not happen on the last day jesus rejected this doctrine but nobody taught us matthew 25 31 to 46 goat and sheep future vision it's not a parable it's a future vision where he divides people from people and based on what we did acts of loving compassion was the only metric he used he did not care for faith like in the good samaritan tale or other the parable he just used the metric of acts of loving compassion these are works remember friends it's all about works he doesn't care a hang whether we believe or not contrary to what the church is taught because they taught the uh, devil's doctrine of deception through paul if they had studied and they had taught us jesus this won't have happened in line with the same deception i found this also how mammon took great advantage of paul's deception Paul was an infiltrator. He came in by his own testimony. Jesus never appointed him, never talked about him. In fact, he says, "Beware of the yeast of Pharisees." He warned us many times, again and again. Won't go into that. You check out that uh, teaching of mine, that video, and you'll find out how many times Jesus was warning, because he knew this deception is going to take place. He knew even before he set the story into motion he knew the end what is the end the new jerusalem comes down where revelation and who is saved only those who had acts of loving compassion matthew 25 31 46 who turned away from sin and turned to what acts of loving compassion to love now friends how does it all tie up is the question you must be saying raj you're running from one to the other no i am just highlighting the deception that took place else you would have known you would have asked who is this mammon and the churches would have had the courage to teach us who is this mammon he is a demon a demonic god of what wealth and he uses that to tempt us to capture our souls do you see what has happened in this sanctuary now even before it used to happen but it's like flared up to this extent that we have ended up serving only mammon that is money when you fault when you and i fall to the greed fall would mean we get tempted and we fall to that temptation of greed of money in any form which is not right which is not righteous and we end up serving money over christ because there is a clash you know what does peter say i do not have gold i do not have silver but what i have i share with you they didn't have nothing let me quote what jesus says and where he says this jesus says again i repeat luke 958 foxes have dens and the birds have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head jesus was telling us very clearly that the life he led he was the captain of the ship he was doing the first walk and we have to do the same walk his uh, disciples peter what does he say i neither have gold neither have silver all i have is this name jesus and i wish to share him with you that name with you so there and then again jesus says give freely for you were given freely it's all about not serving wealth it's all about serving the lord jesus and he's making a direct distinction 
between serving mammon, the demonic god of will, and Christ Jesus, our Lord Christ, the Son of God. Choose one. He's make, asking us to make a choice. Now, who's, uh, who did we choose? Think about today's world. What is happening? Haven't we chosen mammon to serve the will, god of uh, wealth? And uh, everything that wealth buys, haven't we done that? This guy, Mammon, who belongs to the team of Satan, and he is in charge of tempting human beings through wealth. And human beings feel like us, like me rather, if I, even if I want to be, uh, I don't want to put fingers at, like accuse others, because we all have at some point, but there is a time also to wake up to the truth that we cannot serve both Jesus Christ and Mammon. Now think about some of our pastors who have millions of dollars wealth. Who have they chosen to serve? Think about it. This teaching of Pauline, this, all this deception has come from Paul. That he taught us that it's okay. You, you, uh, because he wanted us to get trapped. Now are you connecting the dots? Why was Paul teaching us that? It's okay, whatever you do, you are still saved because once saved is always saved, it is through faith and faith alone. Haven't you heard this deception time and time again? But Jesus rejected it on the last day. Where is it? Matthew 25, 31, 46. What is it? The parable of sheep and goats where he divides people from person to person based on what? Did he even use the word faith? No. This faith, justified by faith alone doctrine of Paul fell flat on its face. It was rejected in total, in totality. All Jesus used was acts of loving compassion. Where did, did he teach us that? Yes, Matthew 22, 37, 40. Love God with all your heart, might and soul. And when you love him and the, love the fellow human being, you keep the entire law and the teachings of prophets. Because Paul taught us the law is dead. You're under grace. Did you know Jesus didn't even utter the word grace? Understand what is happening, friends. And then uh, Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17, 18, I paraphrase that the whole universe can crash and burn, but the law of God cannot go. What does God say about his law? It's written on our minds and on our hearts. It cannot die. Go to Psalms 119. It's all about it's the largest piece of Psalms. And the psalmist says very clearly that's David, that this perennial eternal law just cannot go. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. See, everybody, the whole universe operates under that law. And Paul killed even that law, put us unto grace, under grace, which Jesus never taught. Why am I saying all this? How does it tie up with mammon? It does and it ties up very, very deeply because it's all good whether we serve mammon or whether we serve God. Against what Jesus is saying that you cannot serve both Matthew 6.24, Luke 16.30. You can, according to Paul. You can serve both. You're still saved because you had faith. Do you see a direct contradiction clash? Who do you want to uh, serve friends is up to you. I want to serve my Lord Jesus. I want to deny my flesh and all its desires. I want to reject this mammon and demonic um, uh, temptation of wealth. Even the pastors have been sucked in. Many churches will go down, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Because of what? Falling to mammon. They thought it's okay. So let's grab money left, right and center. We can take tithes in the name of tithes. It, be, it all went out of hands. We know that. See, I have a lot of respect for churches. I have got my teachings, basically the fundamental teachings from a very good church. But finally, they all go to Paul. That's demon, demonic. Because he was a devil's uh, paw, paw or say a pawn of the devil who came to teach demonic doctrine of saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So that you do not obey. What does John 3.36, the great john the baptist says if you believe you will be saved but if you do not obey the wrath of god remains on you check john 3 36 and jesus again and again says if you love me you shall keep my commands he says that in john 14 15 john 14 21 john 14 23 was he joking was he just lying no friends come on he is the face of god you have to focus on what christ taught 
then you will understand how great the deception of mammon is we have been taken down by this guy more than anybody else and more than any other century it is now that this madness for wealth and the world keeps telling us get more money get more properties get more this and get more that what happens we end up serving mammon now you know the purpose of this video has been served you are aware how we serve mammon he is a demonic god with a small g of wealth uh, probably commissioned by satan to trap human beings and get our souls that we end up where devil and his workers end up because we didn't listen to jesus he told us very clearly choose god or choose mammon what have we chosen this i will leave to you to mull over think about reflect on and then decide hopefully you will choose jesus it's a hard walk it was never promised to be a simple walk like paul started teaching said by grace alone through faith alone once you had faith nobody can take away your salvation and this is by the devil's apostle paul right check out revelation 14:21 there were 12 apostles of jesus matthias was the 12th chosen by christ in the presence of all his apostles in the presence of his mother mary and all the top brass of the christian church he chose matthias over anybody else to replace judas and then never mentions paul but he warns us beware of the yeast of the pharisees matthew 6:16 and elsewhere also or rather 16:6 and many other places and this pharisee was Saul the brutal pharisee called Paul check out my videos why again i am repeating do not run after paul run after jesus there's a direct contradiction and remember if you're watching this video you know the truth and this truth will set you free that on the last day paul's doctrine of saved by faith alone taught by our churches was rejected completely in totality in toto by none other than none other than Christ Jesus as he sat on his chair and he judged as the king of man, uh, of the universe and judge of mankind he rejected this doctrine and the only metric he used were acts works of loving compassion based on whoever had those acts of loving compassion he lifted and said come on guys this has been this universe my kingdom was made for you but all those who didn't have he was not interested and he rejected them with a very harsh rebuke read that matthew 25 31 46 it's not a parable it's a future vision of goats and sheep it's the judgment day i think one of my videos highlights that check that out friends i'm here with folded hands imploring you understand the great deception that took place and the shenanigans the shenanigans or the mischief of apostle paul which has led us to serve mammon right and we don't want to hear on the last day what jesus knowing all this will happen he says these words let me repeat them the christ tie jesus's words in matthew 6 to you have to connect the dots friends truly i tell you these guys who have served mammon this i'm adding he says truly i tell you they have received their reward in full now i cannot read everything but you have to connect these uh, the dots jesus says truly i tell you you have received your reward in full because he cannot contradict his own self if he's telling you to make a choice between mammon and christ jesus or god the father you have to learn to reject wealth and treasure put your treasures in where heaven why because god is our portion did you get that part from bible friends i bet you didn't because nobody taught you right he is our portion not mammon these are revelations of god happening through this man i'm just an ordinary tool instrumental instrument of christ jesus he's using like a radio broadcast <laughs> my existence i'm just an average joe but the revelations these teachings are straight from God, uh, the lord jesus take it to your heart uh, apply them obey the lord go to his words red lettered words again and again 
try to understand what is the Lord teaching us. He won't be teaching you separately. He'll be teaching everyone who reads and studies the red-lettered words of Jesus in the New Testament. They are all over the four testaments, uh, rather four gospels and some other places. But four gospels really uh, gives us the scoop of Christ's doctrine. And it was diametrically opposite of what Paul thought because he clearly says you cannot be saved unless you obey. If you love me, you shall keep my commands. If somebody says, oh, I didn't obey but I had faith, then you will end up as the goats. Uh, Matthew 25, 31, 46. So friends, this deception of Paul was basically that, see, like they're evil passing each other, the, the, like we have the hockey ball in India, giving a pass so the other guy scores a goal. He fed us to mammon. Paul did that. He passed us to mammon through what? This cleverly devised doctrine that you have been saved by faith alone. So you're free to serve mammon. And we did that. Even the pastors, some of them have wealth in millions, tens of millions. Will Jesus appreciate that when he rejected the rich man? Are you connecting the dots? He rejected the rich man. Remember the rich man and the and Jesus uh, story, where he the rich man asked him how much, what does he need to do to inherit heaven, the eternal uh, life. Jesus points at. Um, obeying the entire law he says I have kept the law and Jesus says then distribute your wealth give away all your wealth and follow me he says can do it right what happened Jesus lets him go what happened to the Lazarus and the rich man story are you connecting the dots why did Jesus teach us Lazarus was a hopelessly poor man dirt poor Lazarus like Peter like John like Thomas like Jesus this guy had nothing and the he was like Job his hands were full of and body was full of sores a dog would have compassion licked his wounds but the rich man had no no dearth no paucity no scarcity of anything but no compassion, no love, nothing. Else he wouldn't have never allowed. These things you have to add. What happens on the last day? Roles get reversed. What happens to the rich man ends up where? In hell. What happens to Lazarus who had nothing, no relationship with Jesus? Else Jesus would have pointed out. This man ends up in where? Heaven. He had a compassionate and loving heart. That's where he went. So friends, I hope you've understood it's about love. Embrace loving kindness and this love is godly love. Kind, pure, selfless, agape kind of love as Jesus loved us and died for us on the cross. He expects, expects rather us to love others. Do you see? This is diametrically opposite in serving wealth money and different instruments connected with the same object cars wealth uh, in different properties bank balances whatnot this is not going to help on the last day it surely will help you here and to we have encashed that and that's why i said says truly i have, i tell you you've received your full reward why did he say that because we chose to serve mammon we chose to accumulate wealth we chose to serve wealth and that wealth became our God. Getting the point, friends? And we served mammon in the whole process. And this is the story then of mammon. We have to learn to turn away from sinfulness and turn to Christ Jesus and serve him rather than serving mammon, the demonic God of wealth. So friends, I hope this, uh, this video has been sort of a revelation as all this sift in the Bible led me to this and then I found out that what great danger we are in. This mammon, a team member of Satan, the God in charge of demonic powers of wealth 
and temptations wealth gives uh, provides places on us we have to turn away from that and how will we do it if we are not even aware now you are aware right make sure guys do not follow mammon let us be like the apostles who were dirt poor and yet they chose to follow jesus they could have run away after jesus left died and resurrected and was raised to heaven why did they put their necks in in trouble to the extent that many of them were killed and assassinated and murdered because they obeyed to the hilt they did not follow paul they followed jesus we may have to lay down our lives we may have to give up everything but that was the walk of christ jesus because i do not charge a penny because i do not wish to serve mammon my ministries or which is really right now one man effort me it's called christ's words first ministries but i need people eventually but not money i do not want a penny from anybody i wish to serve the lord because i love him i wish to follow him and implement him because i call him my lord my master i am a servant and i will obey him that kind of resolve do i succeed not always i fall i stumble cross on me and i am on the floor head on the soil in the dirt pick up your cross deny your flesh follow me that is the message so friends if you would like share this so we get a broad awareness of what was happening that we don't end up serving mammon but we serve our lord jesus who died for us on the cross and who was resurrected and now will come back this time as the judge of mankind the only metric as shared by him it was a spoiler yet he gave because he's a good lord was acts of loving compassion matthew 25 31 46 don't so mammon with this i fold up this video god bless you and may the lord's choices blessings and wisdom be upon you